The early Cretaceous, a time of great change across the globe, and some species are struggling more than others. In the forests of China, a bulky herbivore is searching for food. She is a Wuherosaurus, a large stegosaur that can grow up to 7 meters long. Despite her size, she is a low browser, feeding on ferns and cycads with her powerful beak. In the late Jurassic, stegosaurs used to be widespread, but with the turn of the Cretaceous, their numbers have plummeted, and now Wuherosaurus are among the last. A series of events from changes in habitat to new competitors evolving are pushing these heavyweights to the fringes. Oblivious to her kind's struggles, this female slowly lumbers through the undergrowth, filling her huge gut as much as she can. As she forages, she is constantly coming into contact with another species of dinosaur, Sotakosaurus. These two-meter ornithopods are small, fast generalists that are very common at this time, and though they are no threat to the huge stegosaur, both species eat similar plants, and so they are occasionally in competition with each other. The Wuherosaurus steadily makes her way to where a group of over 40 Sotakosaurus are feeding, and they all give her plenty of space. The female has been beaten to this area by the smaller dinosaurs, and as she searches, she finds all of the best of the low-lying plants have been stripped clean. However, the little Sotakosaurus can't get up to the trees. Normally, neither can the Wuherosaurus, but she has a way. She approaches a small tree, and while pulling her head backwards, places her front left foot on the trunk, and then her front right foot. Testing to see it will hold her weight, she steadily walks her front feet up the trunk of the tree, arching her back until her head reaches the lowest hanging leaves. This is a behavior that most stegosaurs can do, however it is usually a sign that she hasn't been able to find enough of her normal food, and is having to feed on anything she can. This is also a lot more strenuous than feeding on the ground, and she can't hold this position forever. Lowering herself back to the ground, she is surprised to hear other Wuherosaurus, though much smaller ones. Working their way through both the undergrowth and the flock of Sitakasaurus, march a group of infant Wuherosaurus, barely 30 centimeters long each. Though some stegosaurs form herds, Wuherosaurus live alone once they reach adulthood. The youngsters are drawn to the adult through baser instinct, though the female has no parental bond to them, even if they were her own. Nonetheless, they crowd around her for safety, and she looks over them curiously. These are the first Wuherosaurus she has seen in weeks, as even the adults are becoming fewer in number. There is a rustling in the shrubs, and then a squeal, as one of the Sotakosaurus is attacked by a predator. The herbivore is set upon by a Xenunicus, which has jumped onto its back, holding on with its long fingers. The small herbivore swings wildly, eventually forcing the Lycanivore off its back. Getting back to its feet, the Xenunicus runs after its target, but quickly spots an easier meal the infant Wuherosaurus. The youngsters move closer to the adult, who in turn widens her stance and readies her tail, armed with four signature tail spikes. The Xenunicus eyes one of the small stegosaurs and runs after it, seeming to ignore the four-ton adult towering over them. When the hunter gets close, the female swings her tail, aiming to skewer the two-meter predator, but right before her tail hits him, he bends his legs and jumps into the air, completely avoiding the attack. When he lands, the carnivore bolts forward and seizes one of the small Wuherosaurus in his jaws, and runs away, avoiding the adult's return swing. Before the female can turn her head around to see where the attacker has gone, he has disappeared into the undergrowth, carrying the howling juvenile with him. With no parental instincts, the large Wuherosaurus relaxes her tail and starts to move on almost stepping on the younger members of her kind, leaving them to their fate. Her search for food is endless, and less and less of what she can eat is becoming available. Along with the fact that new, more versatile herbivores are evolving and competing with Wuherosaurus for resources, the species is being pushed into smaller and smaller ranges. Predators too are adapting to take advantage of stegosaur weaknesses, one that their close relatives, the nodosaurs, don't have. The female doesn't know it, but she is one of the last of a formerly incredible dynasty. One that inevitably fades into the shadows of prehistory.
Hello fellow travellers and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down the final chapter in the story of the Stegosaur family, Uherasaurus. Uherasaurus's first remains were found in 1973 in western China, and it was named after the area it was found in, Uher. Multiple individuals have been found, but only fragmentary amounts of the full skeleton are known. With that being said, two species of this genus have been named, the type species, Homhenai, and the second smaller species, Autozensis. A third species was named in 2014, but it was later reassigned to its own genus, Mongolostegus. Uherasaurus was a large genus of Stegosauria that lived in the early Cretaceous between 132 and 113 million years ago. Homhenai is known from slightly better material and grew up to 7 meters long and weighed up to 4 tons. Autozensis was smaller, growing up to 5 meters and weighing 1.2 tons. From the limited remains, scientists have been able to piece together that Wuherosaurus had a typical build for a stegosaur, a small head with a beak for cropping plants attached to a long neck, four strong legs that held up its thick body with two rows of plates that ran down its body and along its tail, ending in four spikes called thagomizers. You'll see a lot of art depicting Wuherosaurus's plates as being very short and this is how they were thought to be for many years. However, later scientists would conclude that they looked this way because the few plates that we have found were actually broken, creating the illusion that they were flat. We don't know what the full-sized plates look like, but given the width of them, it's entirely possible that they were quite large. The type species Hohemi had a very flared out pelvis, indicating that it had a wide body this isn't too surprising, as many herbivores have a large gut, housing a long digestive system to better process the plants they eat. The neural spines at the base of the tail were noted as being exceptionally tall. The main difference between Hohemi and Autozensis, other than their size, is that Autozensis lacks these tall neural spines and had a longer neck. Despite its size, Wuherosaurus held its body very close to the ground, even when compared to other stegosaurs. So even though it evolved to get larger, it was still feeding at a low level, likely holding its head in a constant low angle. Only one spike has been found in relation to Wuherosaurus, however it is not believed to be one of the tail spines, as it was thought to have been a shoulder spine. With how scattered the remains were however, it is difficult to say for certain which part of the body it came from. Wuherosaurus is often cited as being the last known stegosaur to have lived. Most stegosaur species lived in the middle to late Jurassic, but when the Cretaceous started, the number of species seemed to drop dramatically, till by the middle Cretaceous, they are likely all extinct. So what happened to them? Why did they slowly slip into extinction where other dinosaur families continued? There are no definitive answers, but many theories point to changes in climate. The end of the Jurassic may have been hotter than the early Cretaceous. A gradual shift in the climate may have slowly changed some plant life, reducing their number or wiping them out entirely. Stegosaurs were thought to have been relatively choosy in what they could eat, especially with their limited height, and if their food supply disappeared too quickly, they may not have been able to adapt quickly enough. Going along with this theory, they had to compete with other herbivores such as the ankylosaurs. However, stegosaurs and ankylosaurs evolved alongside each other for millions of years. So it may have been newer species of Ornithischians that could better process food and weren't as selective as stegosaurs. On the predator front, it would be far easier to go after a young stegosaur that hadn't grown its thagomizers, as opposed to a nodosaur that had some protective osteoderms, or an Ornithischian that could simply outrun you. These are all theories, and changes in climate of some kind are the most reasonable answer, but it's likely multiple factors played a part. Despite all of that, Wu Herosaurus survived well past the beginning of the Cretaceous, standing as a defiant final branch of its family, boldly holding out against the odds in a world that had driven its kind to the brink of extinction. Well, what do you think of Wu Herosaurus? And for my question of the week, what factor do you think I missed when it comes to the decline and extinction of the Stegosaurs? What lesser known dinosaur would you like me to do a breakdown on next? And until then, please like, share, subscribe, and thank you for watching.